in no way, shape, or form is photography a cheap hobby. All the camera gear that you pretty much see on YouTube can be ranged from anywhere from $200 to $10,000. It's very, very expensive. And as a low budget photographer, it's really hard to get great pieces of gear. But in this video, I'm be sharing five tips on how to build a great camera system on a low budget. So stick around. What's up guys, I'm Project Photography, by another video, and today people, today. As a high schooler, back when I was a sophomore in high school, I started off with a Nikon D5500 and the kit lens, and that was pretty much it. I didn't get my second lens until that Christmas when I bought myself a 55 to 200. But since then, I've been building my camera kit over the years. I have full frame bodies, full frame lenses, and a whole slew of great pieces of camera gear that I use on a daily basis. And I would consider myself low budget throughout the years. I don't really spend too much on gear unless I really have to. I don't buy the most expensive lens, most expensive bodies, and I'm pretty conservative when it comes to spending money. And I know a lot of you out there probably are in the same boat. So I have five tips that I want to share with you guys in terms of how to get a great camera kit on a very low budget. And these are tips that I use all the time, even now when I'm purchasing my own gear, even though I do have my own photography business and I make money from photography. So this is all keeping that in mind because I still want to make sure I have as much low cost as possible. I'm only buying things if I really need it. So I will say this, that to build a great camera kit on a low budget, it will take a little bit of time and a little bit of smarts when it comes to investing in all those sorts of things. With that being said, let's jump right in and talk about the first tip to building a great camera system, which is to buy you. So buying used has a whole slew of benefits and one of them is that buying used will always be cheaper than buying new. This has a few sub benefits to it, but you can buy used through sites like eBay, offer of Facebook marketplace and all these other great places because when you buy used, you're able to actually retain more value for your gear because if you buy new constantly, your gear will devalue over time. It'll become cheaper to actually sell. So you'll actually lose money over the long run. When you're a low budget photographer, you need, you need to be really cognizant of you know, how much you buy your stuff for because you want to make sure you have a good resale value in order to actually make a profit on the things that you buy. And there's also another benefit of actually buying used is that there are great legacy cameras and lenses that actually work really, really well, but you can purchase on a low budget. So let's just say you want to get into Nikon, but you don't want to get that expensive Z system stuff like these Z6, Z7, um, all these other types of things that are really expensive. You can go ahead and purchase something like a Nikon D600 that's around $400. With that, you get a full frame sensor. You get Nikon D4 autofocusing essentially, which is pretty good autofocusing. You get dual card slots and you get a uh, you can get a vertical battery grip. All these great things that isn't necessarily found on a cheaper alternative like a Nikon Z6. You know, Nikon Z6 can be around $1,000 versus the Nikon D600 is around, I wanna say $400. So that difference in price really makes a huge difference. And buying cheaper bodies means that you can also buy cheaper lenses. For example, you can buy a 24 to 70 for around six to $700, the original version that's known VR. There's a 7200 variant out there, the first version, that's around $500. All these lenses still work incredibly well. They're just not the newest models and they can still produce amazing images. Like a lot of the, uh, the photos I've taken on my previous campaign uh, that I did for like a political campaign stuff were shot with an original 70 to 200 and it's an absolutely great lens. So don't think that because these lenses and whatnot are older means that they actually operate worse. In fact, a lot of them still operate the same and at very high uh, level performance. So. Don't feel like if you're buying used, you're actually buying worse because in reality, you might be buying cheap legacy stuff at a absolute steal. I think what the angry photographer says in his videos, he's like, oh, you're buying a Rolls Royce for the price of a cucumber. And that's pretty much what you're doing here. So just as a recap, when you're buying used, you're buying stuff at a much cheaper value. And that means you can sell it for more money, potentially in the long term, make your money back. You can also buy good legacy stuff that still operates the same as today. With that being said, let's jump right into the second um, tip on here which is pretty much to buy for a good enough price to make a profit on resale. So I kind of talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but I just want to reiterate this point a little bit more because when you're buying pieces of gear, you shouldn't necessarily just treat them as, oh, I just want this for a hobby. You should treat it as an investment because later down the road, you're gonna wanna upgrade your gear over time. That's just like all photographers wanna do. You wanna keep on upgrading your gear to the point where it's really good um, in the long run. And at this certain point, you're gonna to wanna to trade up that gear. So if you buy, let's just say a D400, like I was talking about for 350 and sell it for 450 down the road, you make a $100 profit. You can use that money towards different gear and keep on building up 
your sort of equity pool you have. So when you buy stuff for lower and sell for more, you can build up more and more equity in the actual gear you own. So it's not necessarily like cash money you have, but total value of all of your gear that you have. You wanna be able to build that value up over time, making good trades, making good decisions when purchasing stuff, and just overall having good financial senses. So with this, over time, your portfolio of your gear that you have will grow and grow and grow. But again, this takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, making sure you find the right deals, the right gear to purchase for the right price. But over time, if you do that, you can end up with actually really good gear and not have to feel like you have to, you know, always stoop down to the lower levels when it, when it comes to buying cheaper gear. So let's go to the tip number, tip number three, which is to buy lenses and bodies that serve multiple purposes. So for me, I like to maximize the utility I get out of each lens. If a lens could do one or two or three jobs, that's going to be great. For example, one of the lenses I had was a 60 millimeter F 2.8D that I really loved from Nikon. That was a complete Swiss army knife of a lens. You can use that for, you know, macro work. You can use that for portraiture. You can use that for, you know, just generally good normal shots. This was a three tool lens. You can use it for a bunch of different things. You want to find lenses that pretty much accomplish that same purpose. So like the 24-70, you can use for pretty much anything. You want to look at different lenses that can do different things at once for the different niches you're in. For example, uh, if you're a landscape photographer and you do architectural photography, a 14 to 30 will be perfect because you can capture those great landscapes, then go to architectural work and so on. Finding lenses that serve multiple purposes between the different niches of photography you're in is going to be absolutely crucial. This will essentially allow you to minimize the amount of different pieces of gear you have, but at the same time, maximize the quality and the um, different value you get out of each piece of gear. So minimizing the amount of gear you have, but at the same time, maximizing each potential of value out of each piece of lens or gear or whatnot. And with this, that means you can actually get more budget in order to spend on different lenses. The less lenses you have means you can invest more money into each individual lens. So instead of just sticking with, let's just say a 7300, you can go up to that 7200 as long as it serves multiple purposes. So that's how you would justify that. And that's what I've done pretty much throughout my entire career. I've made sure to always Always get lenses that serve multiple purposes. So tip number four is to stick to one camera system. Now I've seen a lot of photographers go out, get Fuji and then Sony and then Nikon and can't like, it's, it's, it's an absolute mess to try to think about, you know, what works with what and a lot of it isn't going to work with each other because they're just not meant to. It just does not make a lot of sense. Like why would you go out and buy another camera system when you can barely manage the system you have now? You don't even have the best lenses and all that for that. And it just does not make any sense. And sticking with one lens mean, or one camera system means that everything you have is compatible with each other. You don't have to worry about, you know, what lenses fit and what bodies and whatnot. It just, if you have one system, point blank, everything works with each other and that's what really matters. And if you're buying into multiple systems, it's like kind of buying multiple lenses that do pretty much the same thing. You wanna be making sure that you maximize the total benefit out of each lens, each system, each body you have. So don't go with multiple camera systems, just stick with one. Keep it simple. Don't worry about buying into different camera systems. You should be doing your research before you actually jump into a camera system, like making sure that what that system has fits your needs. It doesn't make sense to have one system for one thing, one system for another. You wanna try and get those good hybrid systems like Canon, Sony, Nikon, Fuji. They all have great hybrids. So you wanna make sure you stick with one camera system so you can maximize the total benefit out of each body and lens you have. And the last tip for building a great camera kit on a low budget is to simply buy what you need and nothing more. As photographers, we always want to chase that new piece of gear, that new lens just came out, that new body that came out, but you really need to think, is that what I really need? Don't be wasteful. Make sure that you only have what you really need and use. One, one uh, rule that I like to have for, my, for myself if I have a lens or a body that I don't use and just literally collects dust, then sell it. There's no reason to keep it around. You can use those funds to invest it into something better, a lens or a body that you actually need and not have to feel like you're just wasting all this gear that you have. So yeah, don't be wasteful. Buy only what you need. And if something isn't really being used, go ahead and sell it because you can use that money to invest into different things. So just to recap what the five tips of building your camera system are. First one is to buy used. Second one, buy for a good enough price to make a profit when you resell it. Third one is to buy lenses and bodies that serve multiple purposes. Fourth one, only stick to one camera system. And the last one, only buy what you need and nothing more. Those are my five tips that I've used over the years and I've been able to build my camera system to where it is now. I'm sure if you are on a budget yourself, you can probably use these tips in some way, shape or form and it's gonna really help you excel in building a great camera kit. 
at the end of the day, we want our cameras to get out of our way and let us do our job, but it's really hard to even do our job when we don't have gear that suits us very well. So stick to those five tips and I guarantee you in a few years, you'll be able to have a camera kit that you're really proud of and happy with. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Is there any tips that you would have to people who are trying to build a camera system on a low budget? Leave them down in the comment section down below. Anyways, guys, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.